Hey folks, welcome to Dave and Confused. My name is Nathan, and today we are going to be talking about my own personal paranormal experiences. Now, this topic was suggested in the comments on the channel takeover slash update video that we did last week. So, if you have any more suggestions on subjects, topics, movies, whatever, leave those down in the comments below because I read them all and I need all the help I can get. So, we have to rewind now back to about grade six for me. So, I guess you're like nine or ten when you're in the sixth grade. And we had this dog named Scooby. He was uh, he was half hound, half Rottweiler. So we had like the little Rottweiler dots right above his eyes. Great dog. Uh, he was a rescue. Uh, we ended up uh, getting him from like, a very abusive household. Uh, a family member of mine had uh, essentially had the dog smuggled to her because uh, the person in question's husband was off to <sighs> wow, that's a dark story. Uh, off to grab ammunition to finish off my dog, Scooby. Uh, my aunt ended up giving us the dog. She's like, you know, we don't, like, we have too many dogs as is. Uh, and plus, on top of that, cats, yada, yada, yada. So, like, you know, do you guys want a dog? You know, he's a really well-behaved dog, but he's really skittish. So we ended up getting this dog uh, named Scooby. Great dog. I absolutely love this dog. But he was, because of his upbringing he was very uh like very timid very skittish uh very afraid and whenever like even if you know like we had a one-story bungalow that we grew up in and if i were to haul her down from like say my bedroom to the kitchen that was at the other end like not even uh angry or anything like that but just you know like hey ma you know what's for dinner it just that raisin voice would cause the dog to like cower down and and, and pee which which was horrible but um we ended up doing a lot of really good work with the dog. The dog gained this huge love and trust and whatnot in my mother. Uh, Scooby was definitely my mom's dog. And to the point where he would get really protective of her, like he would sleep in bed with my mom. And uh, like even my dad tried to like cuddle up with her in bed, uh, he'd always feel like the dog right there. But like if anybody, like if you were to show affection toward my mom, the dog would like snarl a little bit, like not in a bat, like, I guess in never a good way, but it's not like he would have ever attacked, but he was just very protective of my mother because I guess my mother was the one he really imprinted on and she, you know, I guess was his main caregiver, I guess, uh, like main support system at the time because, you know, like I would have been like nine, ten, my sister would have been like four or five. This dog was like fast. He loved to run. He loved to chase things. He was, you know, like even though he had like a very odd mix of the hound and Rottweiler body, like he had the bulk of the Rottweiler, but he had like more of the height uh, like closer to the height of the hound, like he even had stumpier legs and whatnot, but fast as anything. They love to chase things, including cars, and unfortunately after being only part of our family for about six, seven months, he caught a car. Now where we grew up out in the country, uh, we lived at the top of a hill, uh, like a very, like relatively steep hill from one side, and you couldn't see anything over the other side until you were basically there, and unfortunately, somebody was coming up the road doing you know standard speed limit and it was actually ended up being our neighbor uh well our neighbor was riding uh passenger seat but you know they were just coming up the hill and his driveway was like a little bit further up but not too far and so he wasn't they weren't speeding or anything but coming over the hill like just didn't see him until the very last second because literally you wouldn't be able to see anything until it was maybe 25 feet in front of you and unfortunately scooby was struck uh and the damage was just far too uh much to, to for him to uh recover essentially so we ended up making the tough decision to have to say goodbye and you know ease his pain if you will and we ended up burying him the next day in his doghouse in the yard now this is just kind of setting the scene now something i didn't touch on is the fact that every night he used to make the rounds, as we used to call it. Uh, he'd start sleeping in the living room at the one end of the house, and then uh, he wasn't a light dog, and we had like the linoleum floor because it was a house built in the 80s, and you'd hear him click clack, click clack at around you know midnight or something like that, and he'd spend like about an hour in my sister's room sleeping there, and then uh, you'd hear the click clack, click clack to my room real quick, and he'd spend an hour and a half sleeping with me, and then you'd feel him jump off the bed because he was not a light dog and then click clack to my mom's room where he'd spend the rest of the night. That was his like nightly routine. 
and you know he'd wake you up while he was doing it especially if he hadn't fully gotten to sleep well about two nights after he had passed I hear the, the like I wake up to the click clack click clack of his little like claws touching the linoleum and we had literally buried him the day before but he had, he had been passed since uh, I guess a day and a half almost two days and I was like no 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 this is like you're, you're dreaming like Nathan you're dreaming you're being ridiculous this is a dream snap out of it and I'm like I'm yanking on my ears I'm pinching myself like everywhere I can and it hurts I'm feeling it and I'm like I'm hearing the dang click clack a little bit passes I'm a little freaked out you know that that kind of goes on a little bit and I was like okay you know you're just this is all in your head no big deal it's really emotional time just go to bed and I used to suffer from really really bad insomnia at the time so getting to bed was a little bit of a thing so I like lie down I'm trying to fall asleep and just as I'm starting to nod off I hear the click clack because it's been about an hour and I'm like no 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 pinch 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 yank 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 you know everything I can to make sure I'm awake and I'm awake and I hear the click clack click clack and I hear it stop at my bedroom and we had carpet so like that's how it would usually go like you hear the click clack until he hit my sister's room and then you hear the click clack until it hit my room because we all of our bedrooms were carpeted and then the moment obviously he was on the carpet you couldn't hear him but I was like, oh, okay, okay, this is, uh, I, you know, and I remember, you know, trying to almost, like, sit up and, like, look, I didn't see anything, you know, like, it was dark, obviously, but I think we had a nightlight in the hallway a little further down, so you'd be able to at least kind of, like, it wasn't fully dark, but it was dark enough. I don't remember seeing anything, like, I'm not saying, like, oh, I saw an apparition, but I just remember, like, just feeling... Like, as much as I was, like, apprehensive, as much as I was kind of, like, I, I don't know if scared's the word, uh, like, probably at least a little bit, but, you know, like, just, I remember also kind of feeling weirdly safe, if that makes any sense. Like, it was just an odd, an odd feeling. And yes, I know I'm remembering back to about, like, 10 years old, but, you know, like, you got a decent amount of memory at 10, or, like, your memories from 10. And, like, I just remember, like, it was weird, you know what I mean? Like, it was just kind of like a weird, peaceful thing. And then I remember kind of falling back to sleep a few minutes later, and then I wake up again when I hear the small little click-clack to my mom's room. And now, my mom's room was, like, literally 90 degree to mine. Like, my doorway was here, I was at the very end of the hallway, and then her doorway was, like, right beside mine. So it was only, like, usually a little, like, a little, like, click, 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 click. Is all you'd hear. And I remember, like hearing like the first click, my eyes jet open wide, and then I, I heard them stop when they hit my mom's room. And, you know, I was just, at that point, like it was, it made, it made me happy, I guess is the best way to say it. Like I felt like, you know, he wasn't done with us, if that makes sense. That we made his life that much better, even though it was only like the last six months of his life, but, um, no, it was, uh, it was a weird, like, it was, it was definitely a weird experience, but it made me happy. It was like a sad kind of happy because I was really distraught when, you know, we had to say goodbye to the dog, say goodbye to Scooby. And he was actually the last dog we owned for, geez, uh, about 10 years or so until my mom and my sister decided to get, or, uh, you know, uh, the dog that they currently have now, Simon. But no, it was just, I don't know. Like the, like I said, it was just such a nice feeling. Like, cause we didn't really get to say a proper goodbye, I guess. Cause as much as uh, they were like, you know, we were saying kind of goodbye to him. It was, it was pretty rushed because he was in a lot of pain, I guess. So um, like the whole bottom half of his body was essentially like broken. Like he was just shattered, unfortunately. And, uh, but no, it was like, I don't know, it was just a really nice kind of goodbye, I guess, like it felt like, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, no, uh, that was probably my first and pretty much only like real paranormal thing, if you can even call it that. Like I don't recall feeling overly cold. I don't recall, you know, like, you know, like the, the standard, like, you know, telltale things that people have when they're dealing with like, you know, think about paranormal things, like the idea of, 
uh, you know, like, like I said, like lights flickering or something like that. We didn't have, I don't remember any of that personally, but I, I, I remember the distinct little click clack of his claws as he was walking through and, you know, I just remember feeling less sad, if that makes sense. Like, obviously I was sad that he was gone, 100%. Like, I miss that dog all the time. He was a great dog. Like, after his first, like, two months with us, and he, you know, he really learned to, you know, like, love again, to trust again. This dog was so full of love. Best dog. And, you know, he just, he was taken way too early, and it just kind of felt like, you know, he wasn't done with us yet. If that makes sense, I don't know. But that's my my paranormal experience i guess and i don't, it only happened the one night it only happened the one night it wasn't like a reoccurring thing you know um i guess when i was a kid i just kind of got the feeling that because we didn't get a very good goodbye and it was very hectic and uh you know he was suffering a lot but since you know it was more of a hectic and rushed sort of goodbye and there was like a lot of fear and tears and whatnot. I always kind of when I remember back to it I feel like that wasn't the goodbye Ooh. that he wanted if that makes sense. Keep it together Nathan. Ooh. I just I don't think it was the goodbye that he wanted or that he needed and that's why he did his regular nightly routine. So that's a paranormal experience that I've gone through. It's the only one I can really think that I can't chime up to say being like overly tired or you know to even being a dream. This one was the one where like I remember going through like everything, I was like pinching myself, everything, and I could have sworn that I must have been asleep. I must be dreaming, but I'm like, nope, I am hurting myself. Like this is real. And yeah, it was, uh, I know it's not a scary one. I know it's not a scary story by any means, like a scary paranormal thing. So, but it was, it was the one paranormal interaction that I've personally had. Uh, but I don't think that paranormal things necessarily need to be scary, if that makes sense. I think sometimes, like, you know, like the, the movie industry really glorifies the idea of, say, like, unfinished business and whatnot as being like, oh, like, I need to nab my killer, you know, I need revenge, I need this, this and that. And I think maybe in some situations, like this one per se, it was, they just wanted a better goodbye, you know? I don't know. And I know mine has to do with a dog. Like, it was... You know, there, I know people would have different opinions on whether or not dogs can haunt you or, you know, have unfinished business. I don't know. But, like I said, I know what I felt. I know what I heard. And at the very least, to me, it's it's real. It, it has been ever since I was a kid. Uh, not a year goes by where, I, you know, I don't think of Scooby and think about what had happened you know at least a few times in that year like something will happen and it just like brings back the memory i think family is probably one of the tightest things that can really tie people together when it comes to like paranormal experiences in this and at the end of the day be it six months be it 10 years the dogs become part of the family pets do and you know our dog loved us and i think he just really wanted to let us know so I do apologize, it wasn't a creepy, scary, paranormal experience. It was definitely a little emotional for me, because I don't think I'd actually talked about it much in recent histories. No, actually, to be honest, I don't think I've talked about it at all in a long time. So how about you? What are some of the paranormal experiences that you've had? Like, uh, have they been more on the scarier side? Have they been more on the heartfelt side like this one? Have they always been with a human? Have they been with a dog? Have you even had any? Yeah, uh, make sure you leave those down in the comments below. And you can also leave any topics and or subjects that you'd like me to take a look at or cover. Like, I don't mind doing a little bit of homework. If you've got a movie that you think is going to scare the absolute bejesus out of me, or something like that, feel free to leave that in the comments below. But either way, folks, my name is Nathan. This has been Dave and Confused. And, hey, at least our dogs aren't werewolves. Wow, that's a... Yeah, good thing my dog wasn't a werewolf.
Well, I was buried in the yard. We lived out in the country. No one would have heard a scream if he wanted revenge. <laughs> yeah.